I have seen so many people make really, really cool AI agent applications, but they either have no user interface to interact with their chatbot, it looks really terrible, or even worse, they spend days, weeks, even months working on their interface when it really doesn't have to be that complicated. And so that's actually what I'm going to show you how to do today. I'm going to show you how to take the AI agent that we've developed over the last couple of masterclass videos and create a really beautiful and simple user interface around the chatbot. It's going to be so easy to make and it's going to make everything look so much better. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so here we are in the code we had from the last masterclass video where we incorporated Langchain to make our Asana AI agent chatbot much simpler and more powerful. And now we get to add the user interface because before we were just using the terminal and it wasn't very pretty. And now we're going to make it look really sexy and easy to use. And we're going to use all of this to make things much easier to work with in all the projects that we got in the masterclass going forward. Just like the last two videos I had, I'm going to have a link in the description of the video to the GitHub repository where you can follow along with everything that I'm doing here. And I show you exactly how to set up everything just like I have. So you'll clone the GitHub repo and you can pull in this folder right here, 3-agent-ui. And then I have the example environment variables you can follow along with very easily. And also the requirements file so you can see the exact Python packages and the versions you'll need to run everything that I show here. So with that, we can dive right in to the code. So the first thing we're going to do here is import our shiny new toy streamlit. This is the Python package that is the key to creating beautiful and simple user interfaces. In fact, it's so simple that we don't even have to change the way we're interacting with our large language model right now. And so this function right here to create our Asana task, we don't have to touch that at all. This function even to prompt our AI, we don't even have to touch this right now. We will when we get into streaming later to make our responses even more robust in the UI. But for now, we're gonna leave this exactly as is. The only thing that we're gonna to touch to get our UI up and running is our main function because this is where we handle our user messages and our AI messages. Right now, we just display them out to the terminal as you can see here. But now we're gonna make it actually display to an interface that we have running in our browser with Streamlit. And so right off the bat, we're going to start by adding our first component to our Streamlit UI, and that is a title. So the way that you add any component to the UI with Streamlit is you say Streamlit, or ST for short, because that's how we imported it in our script, dot, and then the name of the component that you want to add. So it can be uh, user input or title, chat message, dot, whatever you want. And then we're saying the title is Asana Chatbot. So we can literally run this now. We had to have a user interface that's blank, except for we have a title now. And it is that simple to get started. You don't have to have all the boilerplate that you need if you were to develop a full website uh, with something like React or uh, vanilla JavaScript with HTML and CSS. Super, super nice. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to initialize some session state. So everything that you want to manage in your user interface with Streamlit, you manage with session state. So we'll store our chat history, i.e. the messages. We'll store the user input. All these things are going to be kept in the session state so that it can be maintained as the application runs. And so if messages is not in the session state currently, we're going to set it to an array, which is a single value, which is the system message. So this starts the default context for the conversation, which this is where we just provide context like your personal assistant who helps manage tasks in Asana. And we give it the current day as well to help with its accuracy for due dates. Now, the reason we have to check and make sure that messages is not already in the session state is because of something very, very key with Streamlit. This is very important to know. Whenever there is any change to your user interface with Streamlit, like a user enters a message, there's new text on the screen, large language model produces a response, Streamlit will rerun your entire Python script. That's how it cycles through and updates the UI with anything that changes. And so with that, we need to make sure that we only initialize the messages session state if it is not initialized already. Otherwise, anytime you were to input something or the AI were to respond, if we didn't have this if statement here, it would reset the messages every single time there's a UI state change to this array with just the system message. So it would clear the entire chat history and go back to the system message every single time. We don't want that. And so I took a bit of time to explain that there because that's really important to understand how Streamlit works. And this is just a good example of how we have to set up things, keeping that in mind. All right, so next up, what we're going to do is display all the messages in the UI that we currently have in the chat history. So remember, this is, runs every single time there's any kind of change. And so 
every time the script runs, we need to redisplay the messages to the UI. Don't worry, it's really nice and quick, so it's not going to look glitchy or anything just because it's redoing this every time there's any change to the UI. So we loop through every message in the state, and we get the type of message, and then we create a st.chat message component, and then within it, we use st.markdown to add the content to that chat message box that'll either be for the user or for the AI. Really, really nice and simple. Now what we're going to do, instead of looping forever, we don't need to do that within the user interface. We're just going to react to the user input. So we're adding a new st.chat input component to our UI with a default text of what would you like to do today? That's just a placeholder. And anytime there's any input that the user enters in this component, it is automatically going to be put in this prompt variable. And if there is anything in this prompt variable, then we're going to do everything within this if statement. And the first thing that we're going to do is instead of appending messages to this array that we we're managing in our Python script before, we are going to actually add it to the UI with a new chat message component, and we're going to add it to the session state. So anytime there is a new message from the user or the UI, we have to update both the user interface and the session state. That's really important to keep in mind. We want those two things to be consistent. And so we update both at the same time. And then for getting the response from the AI, we're going to open up a new chat message component of type assistant. And then we're going to get the response just like we did before, except we're passing in the streamlet session state for the messages instead of that message array that we had before. And then adding st.markdown with the response. And again, adding the AI response to the messages state, just like we did with the user message. And that is literally it. I took just five minutes, transform this entire thing from a terminal to a user interface with Streamlit. So, so easy. And so now we get to run it and see what our chatbot looks like. So we're back in the terminal this time to run our Streamlit UI. But this time, we just run the application in the terminal. We don't have to live in there and type in there. And so the command to run this user interface is Streamlit run and then the name of the Python script, which is agent with UI.py in this case. Note that I don't have to give the full path to the script because my current directory is where I'm at right here uh, with the Python script. And so you just go ahead and hit enter. It'll take a little bit to spin up the UI and then you'll get these lines right here that say, hey, your app is running in your browser and it'll actually automatically open up the tab in your browser with the user interface for your chatbot. So let's go over to that. All right, our chatbot is looking much, much better now, not being in a terminal. This user interface looks so clean and simple. I love it. It even displays the system message to us to show that this is the start of the conversation, that default context. We could also hide this if we want. A lot of chatbots don't show the system message, but I just wanted to have that there to show you what it looks like. Also, just a couple of things I want to point out really quick. You can deploy this in like a couple of clicks. It's so easy to deploy Streamlit applications, so it's actually a full website. There's also a ton of settings you can play with as well, um, like changing the theme, all that good stuff. And so, yeah, it's just a robust UI right out the gate with barely any work on your end. It is so nice. So, yeah, let's go ahead and let's uh, actually talk to the AI. Hey, how are you? Get a response super, super quick. I love it. All right, let's go. Let's try to actually create a task now in Asana. So I'll say I need to go on a run by Tuesday. All right, let's see what it does for us here. And boom, there we go. Created a task going to run by Tuesday, July 9th. Perfect. And it even gives us a link. And since we used st.markdown, it's displayed neatly here in a hyperlink. That is wonderful. And so we can actually go over to Asana now and see if the task was created for us. So let's go over to Asana and boom, there it is. Go on a run, due date Tuesday. Perfect. All right, there we go. Uh, so now as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to add streaming to the user interface. And so that way the responses from the AI come out in typewriter style where you can see it typing out the message instead of it just throwing everything into the user interface at the same time. It's definitely something you want in a more robust chatbot UI. And so I'm going to show you how to do it now. I wish I could say that streaming with AI agents that have tool calling is really simple, but unfortunately there is a bit of trickiness to it. But that is why I am here to break it down and make it really easy for you to understand. And so the first thing to think about is how would we do streaming if we didn't have tool calling. It's actually really simple. And there's even a video I uploaded recently on my channel where I show how to create a streamlit chatbot without tool calling. 
all you have to do here is in the function that you invoke the large language model with, you just need to take the stream from the AI and return it. End the function there, give it over to Streamlit to display on the UI. Really, really easy. But with tool calling, it's a little bit trickier because we actually have two different calls to the AI depending on if we need to invoke a tool or not. So this function here, prompt AI, it needs to create a stream, return that to the front end display, but it still needs to continue to invoke the function if applicable. And then if it does invoke a function, actually invoke the large language model a second time to get the response based on the result of calling the tool. And so we can't just get the stream here and then return because that'll end the function so it can't do the function calling. We need to return the stream and then still continue. And we're gonna do that using Python generators. And I'll show you how to do that so that we can actually yield the chunks of the stream while still continuing through the function to invoke the tool and get that second stream as well. So the first thing that we're gonna do in our main function is accept the stream from the prompt AI call. So everything looks pretty similar, except we now get a stream that we write out to Streamlit using the nice built-in component st.writeStream. Nice and easy there. And then we also need to update the way that we incorporate this message into the session state as well, because now that we're getting a stream, we're not getting that full AI message Langchain object returned to us from prompt AI. So we need to build this manually where the content is gonna be the full response. Once the stream is complete, that is what we add to the session state for the AI message. So that is everything that we have in the main function. Now we get to add streaming to prompt AI. And we don't even need to change the way that we create our Asana chatbot with tools object, but we do need to change the way that we invoke it because instead of dot invoke, we're gonna use dot stream. So we have this stream now that we get to go over the chunks. And so we're gonna do that just like this. So we loop over all of the chunks in the stream and for every chunk that is created, we're going to yield it. This is using the concept of generators in Python. And so now the stream that we're putting in Streamlit is gonna be updated each time we yield a chunk, but we don't have to exit the prompt AI function. So we're returning values without cutting the function short. And then we also build up this gather JSON, which is going to include all the tool calls as you can see here. So if there are any tool calls, it is going to be in the gathered.toolcalls array. And so now we can say, if we have any tool calls, we're going to invoke the tool just like we did before, where we get the name and the arguments from what the large language model returned. And then we'll actually invoke that tool and add it as a tool message to our chat history for the context for the AI. And then going back down to the bottom here, the way that we get that second response is very similar. We get the stream from invoking prompt AI, just like we got the message from recursively invoking prompt AI before. And we're going to loop over all of the additional chunks in our additional, our second stream, and we'll yield these chunks as well. And so this entire time, we've just been yielding chunk after chunk from both of these responses. That's what's going to be given to the user interface, but we never had to return early. In fact, we don't need to return at all. And so we can delete that as well. And so that is it. It's a little bit more complicated than what we've been working with before this point, but it's still not that bad. Yielding instead of returning, just to give all these chunks to the user interface while we can still continue on with that function. So I hope that makes sense. Now we get to actually dive in and see what our chatbot looks like with the streaming. All right, just a couple of corrections I want to make before we dive into looking at the user interface with streaming. I forgot to change AI response in a couple of places here. It has to actually be changed to gathered because that is the name of the variable that we have now that we're building up the response as we get the chunks. And so we just have these couple of changes right here. The other thing is I added the AI message here at the bottom. I just have to make sure that you import that as well. So I was getting a couple of errors as I was running this, but those are the quick fixes. So now we can just dive right into the user interface. All right, we're back in the Asana chatbot site. I didn't even have to rerun my Streamlit command to make my changes apply because Streamlit automatically has hot reloading incorporated. So any changes you make to your code will automatically be reflected in your site without having to rerun anything. So let's go ahead and test out the streaming. So I'll ask a simple question again, like, hey, how are you doing? And there you go. It typed it out. You could see that it wasn't just thrown into the UI all at once like we saw earlier. And so let me ask another question just to get something a bit longer so you can really see it typing out. So I'll say, uh, when was the first four minute mile and how long exactly did it take? All right, there we go. Nice. Roger Bannister, May 6th. 
1954. And so now we can actually test out creating tasks with streaming as well. And so I'll say, I need to break the four minute mile by Monday. All right. <laughs> Wow. Okay. It, it didn't even let me do it right away. It's it, it's warning me. That's kind of stupid <laughs> to break the four minute mile within uh, two days of training. Um, I'll say create the task anyway. I don't care. I'm going to do it. Let's see what it does for me here. Um, okay. There we go. Created the task for me in Asana due by Monday, July 8th. We can head on over to Asana and see if it works. And there we go. All right. Break the four minute mile by Monday. It's very, very ambitious. AI didn't even think I could do it, but I believe in myself, so I'm going to do it. Uh, but anyway, that is it. We have successfully incorporated streaming into our chatbot. So there you have it. In a short amount of time, we've created a full user interface for the Asana AI agent chatbot. In the next masterclass video, I'm going to soup the heck out of this chatbot and make it so that it can do a lot of different things in Asana besides just creating tasks. And so I'm going to turn it into an agent that can fully manage my tasks for me and for you as well. And so I look forward to seeing you in the next masterclass video. If you enjoyed this content, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.